Endpoint detection and response is now an integrated feature in InCentral. Unlike traditional antivirus that works to prevent attacks, EDR uses advanced machine learning to identify anomalous behavior. Now that EDR is integrated into InCentral, you can centrally configure policies that help you standardize how it is that you roll out security across your customers, and you can centrally, scalably, and efficiently respond to security threats that are found in your customer's environment. Let me show you how. Setting up EDR is very easy to do. What you'll see is that we've added a new menu at the system level of InCentral called Integrations. From here, you'll have access to a new Integrations Management submenu. This is where you're going to go to enable the Endpoint Detection and Response module. You can see here, I have it enabled already in my trial uh, in Central Server. If I want to learn more about this module, I can click the Learn More button to get an explanation of what this module is. If this was my first time coming to this screen, instead of having a Manage button here, I would have an Activate button. So turning on the Endpoint Detection and Response module is as easy as coming to this Integration Management screen and hitting the Activate button. Once that activation is complete, it takes just a, a couple of seconds to do, you'll see this new EDR menu appear and underneath it, the dashboards, analyze, and profiles submenus. Let's start out by talking about EDR profiles, which are how you're going to configure EDR to behave in your customer's environments. By default, and Central comes with a default set of uh, configuration options for EDR, and every profile that you create inherits those settings by default, um, and you can then customize them accordingly. Generally speaking, you're probably going to have a workstations profile, a server's profile, and a sensitive devices profile, where you're just detecting what's going on. You're not necessarily remediating the problem. To add a new profile, click the Add Profile button, give it a name, like server settings, and a description. When you hit Next, you're brought to an embedded Sentinel-1 screen that allows you to control the different settings for EDR. For example, right now it's inherited all the settings from the default policy. If I click Change Policy, it allows me to customize all of the various settings, including what engines are enabled or disabled, what EDR should do for threats versus sus suspicious activities. And this is also where I can go to configure things like the blacklists that I want to have, the exclusions that I want to make for either by file by path or by hash. This is how it is that you're, you're going to configure how it is that EDR behaves on the devices you install it on. When you're done configuring these options as you see fit, you can hit back, your profile is now saved, and you're then able to start deploying this to your customer's devices. There are two ways to deploy this to your customer's devices. The first way is you can go to the All Devices view you can pick on an individual device, a Windows device, for example, or a Mac device, and you can go to the Settings tab. And here on the Settings tab, what you'll see is that there's a new Endpoint Detection and Response sub-tab. And on here, you can enable it, you can choose which profile you wish to use, and you can choose when EDR will be installed and when the reboot that needs to occur after the initial install will take place. What's important to note here is you, you can have it install right away uh, and reboot during the next scheduled maintenance window, or you can have the install and the reboot happen in the same maintenance window. And to configure a maintenance window for an individual device, you just need to go to the Maintenance Windows sub-tab, click Add, and go to Scheduled Maintenance Integrations. You'll see here Endpoint Detection and Response is pre-configured. You can choose which actions you want this maintenance window to control, either, either the install or the reboot, and then the various sub-options of when you want that maintenance window to take place. That's how you'd enable EDR per device, but that's not a very scalable solution necessarily, although it is valuable for doing things one device at a time. The other way that you can enable and deploy EDR is by going from the system level to the SO or to the customer level and from here, configuring EDR deployments through the use of rules. Rules are available at the configuration menu, the monitoring submenu, and then finally the rules page. Once you're on the rules page, you can click the add button to add a new rule. You can then configure that rule accordingly, give it a name, choose which filters to use to make sure the rule targets the right devices. And then underneath the network device configuration options tab, 
we have an endpoint detection and response subtab. And from here, you can choose what action you want the rule to do to devices that it targets. No change, install EDR, or uninstall EDR. In our case, we're gonna to choose to install EDR. Again, we choose what profile we want, and then we can choose when this uh, install and reboot of EDR should occur. Either immediately install it and then reboot it during the next maintenance window, or do both the install and the reboot during the maintenance window. You can also configure your maintenance windows through rules. If I now go to the maintenance windows tab, from here I can configure, much like I could at the device level, the maintenance windows for endpoint detection and response. I can choose the same exact options of should this maintenance window cover the install, should this maintenance co window cover the reboot, and so on. As you can see, it's very easy then to quickly get EDR deployed. It takes only a couple of seconds to set up the profiles that you need. It takes only a few more seconds to deploy EDR to a single device or to use a rule to deploy it for you automatically across a broad range of devices. This makes it a very scalable, very easy, and very repeatable process to use to ensure that your customers' environments are secured properly. Now, once EDR has been deployed to your customers' environments, it's been installed, let's talk a little bit about how you can start using EDR in your day-to-day -day activities. The first thing that you can do is in the integrations menu, the EDR submenu, let's take a look at the dashboard. This is another embedded page from EDR, and this gives you access to understand how many devices you have in your customers' environments, what their status is, and if any threats are uh, detected on these devices that need your action. You can also go to the Analyze tab. This is where you can go to drill into the specific uh, issues that were found, understand more detail about what's going on with them, and choose to take action if that's what's, re what's required. Now that we've gone over how you can use profiles to configure EDR, either on a per customer basis, or perhaps at the SO or system level across multiple customers, let's take a look at what you do with EDR on a day-to-day -day basis. And to start, let's take a look at the EDR dashboard. The dashboard is located under the integrations menu and the EDR submenu. Think of the dashboard as your homepage for understanding what it is that EDR is seeing in your environment. In this case, I can take a look at the top banner and see that there are 30 unresolved threats. 23 of them are active, seven threats have been, have been mitigated. There are 10 endpoints under management in this environment one of which is infected, nine of which are online. And down here, I have a quick summary of the threats or incidents that EDR is aware of. Now, in this test environment, if I switch to the last 30 days, we see a whole bunch of really good data. And what this allows, allows me to do is really quickly understand what's going on across my customers' environments. And I can quickly click into any of these to get more details about them, but the reality is this summary of what threats are present in my customers' environments is actually sort of a shortcut link to the Analyze page, which is where I will take you next. The Analyze page is where you're going to go to dig more deeply into the issues that EDR has found and to take action. Depending on the profile that you have set up, EDR may have completely solved the issue, it may have quarantined the file but still requires your input, or it may have done nothing and is waiting for you to take action as to what it should do with the problem that it found. If you take a look at the screen now, I have a list of issues that were found. I can use the filtering capabilities of the Analyze page to narrow down what it is that I'm looking for. Maybe I'm only looking for a certain file name because that's the ticket that I'm working, or maybe I'm only working on Windows devices today, or maybe I want to find out issues that, that are uh, tagged with a certain classification like malware or ransomware. I can use these filters to quickly find whatever it is that I'm looking for, and then I can click into the, the distinct problem that I'm after. Let's take a look at this click here for free donuts threat. This gives us a lot of data. You can see what steps have been taken to kill it, to quarantine it, to remediate it, or to roll it back. I can choose to disconnect the device from the network if I want. And I can see that the issue is unresolved, but mitigated. In sort of the middle section of the page, I have a lot of really good data about where the threat was found, what engine detected it, and what sort of file parameters and properties it has. If I scroll down just a little bit, I can take a look at the attack overview to get a sense of how many files it affects, what sort of processes it ran. If I take a look at the attack storyline, I can understand 
how it is that it was launched, what processes it spawned, and how those processes interacted with each other. Now, this may seem like a lot of detail to get into, but the reality is it is great for two different audiences. One audience is if you are the technician who's responsible for addressing this problem and you need to bring your customer's environment back to a, a safe, a known good condition, this helps you understand what was changed so that you can take the necessary steps to address the issue. This is also very useful information for a security auditor or a security department or maybe a regulatory or compliance auditor who's looking to understand more about the issue. And for them, this attack storyline is really useful, as is the raw data report, which you can download here. So clicking into a threat provides you with a ton of really excellent data to help you better understand the nature of the threat and how you may want to go about resolving the issue. Going back to the analyze page, I can choose from this page what, what action I want to take. For example, I can see here I have a couple of active uh, threats. Some were killed off, some were not. I can choose one or more of these, and then I can choose which action I want to take. Do I want to kill it? Do I want to quarantine it? Do I want to roll back? Do I want to connect the device to the network once I've fixed it or disconnect it because I think it still poses a threat? But I can quickly and easily take action from here to address the issue at my customer's location. As you can see, the integrated version of SolarWinds EDR provides you with a lot of great capability to quickly understand what's happening at your customer's environments, either per customer or across customer, and it provides you with excellent depth around understanding what the nature of the threat is, and it provides you with handy tools for taking care of the problem at hand.